Hey, so I'm in the car and I'm gonna return some library books, but before I do, I just wanted to show you a few of these because I thought they were really cute and um, especially one just touched me in a way that I never thought a book could and really made me think about how I'm parenting. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. We love going to the library. We get tons and tons of books. In fact, I have two huge bags needing to go back into the library now and I've got to hurry in so that way I can get some new ones for bedtime. But I just want to show you these few books that we got recently because they are just beautiful and fantastic and my kids loved them and they were read over and over again. So let's get right to it. This first one is James Harriet's Treasury of Inspired Stories for Children. I heard about this book because of um, Ambleside Online's uh, Charlotte Mason inspired um, book list. And so these were really sweet veterinary stories. The pictures were just, um, just beautiful, beautiful illustrations. And they all talked about animals and um, some special stories with each animal. So this was just a really special uh, book. The, there's many stories in here. They are a little bit longer, so they were great for the listener during read aloud times. Um, but the Red Defender, uh, he really only stuck around for one when he, I think, was eating ice cream before bed. So <laughs> that gives you an idea of how this one is. Next up is, uh, I think it's called Square by Mac Bennett. And this was just kind of cute. It's it's not quite a board book, but it's um, thicker. And the illustrations are cute, and it talks about Square and what he does, and um, then Circle approaches him and asks him to do something, and Square kind of feels overwhelmed and isn't sure about that. And it ends up that um, what he thinks is going to be a mistake and just isn't going to work. See, it's all just going terribly. Ends up working quite well for him. So this was a cute story about how sometimes we don't really think something we're doing um, is so great, but other people see us differently. Another one in this last haul was this Nursery Rhymes book by Debbie Gliori. Nursery rhymes and poems are so good for our kids because of the rhymes and it gives them phonetical awareness. I liked these because it has beautiful illustrations, but then it also would tell a little bit about um, different things. Like, did you ever know that Humpty Dumpty was a game that you can play holding your hands and knees? Most of these are ones that you've heard before, but there were a few new ones. Um, but the, I just liked the illustrations and that really made my three-year-old be able to listen to these. Um, we even took it to a park and read some out loud while we were having our tea, so... I have two more for you. Um, this is my second one, and then the last one is my favorite. This is My Pet Book by Bob Stark. And this was a sweet story. Um, again, vibrant illustrations about pets and what would be a good, uh, a good pet and the idea of losing something and having to go chase after it. Um, and how he is able to get it back in the end. So this was just a really sweet book about books, which is kind of fun, and just how much we should value them and enjoy them. Last but certainly not least, this is the book that inspired this video, Eduardo, the Horriblest Boy in the Whole Wide World by John Burningham. The illustrations in here are just very simple, um, nothing too fancy about them, but they get the emotion across. And this is just such a book that made me really think about my parenting and think about how I'm interacting with our kids regularly. This is Eduardo. He's an ordinary boy. Um, he would get up in the morning, get dressed, have his breakfast, go to school, play games, eat his supper, and go to bed. So then it describes some of the things that little boys do and how people react to him. Eduardo became rougher and rougher. Then he's noisy. You are the noise. You are a very noisy boy, Eduardo. You are the noisiest boy in the whole wide world. 
and it goes on and on, and he gets nastier and nastier, more and more cruel, messier and messier. You're the messiest boy in the whole wide world, until all he hears is you are the horriblest boy in the whole wide world. But then things change, because people see him differently. So he kicks a pot of flowers, and he says, I see you're starting a little garden, Eduardo. It looks lovely. You should get some more plants. And every time then he does something that he normally would have done, and yet he is perceived differently. And as he's perceived differently, you can see his countenance changes and he is able to think of himself differently. And he goes on and on. And this just made me think about um, how we interact with our kids do we remind them that they're a boy and we all have good and bad parts of us, but that's, um, that's just how we are. We're not perfect and the things that we do don't necessarily um, define us entirely but making sure that that is brought out to them. So I hope you enjoyed that impromptu library haul. Just a few books that um, we enjoyed this last week. Um, or two weeks or three weeks. I don't know when we last came to the library. And now I'm going to head in and get some more books, which um, maybe someday I'll tell you about too. But I hope you enjoy reading all sorts of books with your kids. It's a wonderful way to bond with them and to share memories and to learn new things together. So I hope you are having a great day and are enjoying every bit of it. We'll see you later.